morning. Sally Hubble here from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Healdsburg, and I am here with our morning devotion today, Wednesday of the second week in Advent. So we begin on page 137 of your Book of Common Prayer. Um, you can follow along if you like, but it's not necessary. And as always, my friend Nita Holf is watching, which is great. Hello, Nita. Good to see you. Um, we begin with a portion of Psalm 51. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, we have been reading along in the Gospel of Luke um, for quite some time, and for some reason that I don't know or understand, um, we take a huge detour today and turn to the Gospel of John, uh, we finish out that gospel and pick up with the woman caught in adultery in chapter 8. So 7.53 through 8.11. And then we, we skip. No, I don't think we do. And then we just get back to Luke. I don't know why this happens. I think I'm reading it right. But today we have John, um, the beginning of the 8th chapter of John for some reason. Um, I don't know why that is, but we do. Today's Wednesday. Yes, today's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. I'll try and do some research between today and tomorrow and see if I can figure out why that is. So here we are, uh, starting with John 7, 53 through 8, 11. Then each of them went home while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the ground. When they kept on questioning alone with the woman standing before him, Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And he said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. That is a powerful story. One of the things about it that stands out for me, um, reading it right now, is that no one questions her guilt. You know, it would be very easy to just accuse someone and let that be her condemnation. And Jesus doesn't question her guilt either. He just says, I don't condemn you. Go your way. And from now on, do not sin again. Of course, everyone in the story is a sinner, which is what Jesus points out. Let the person without sin throw the, cast the first stone. And none of them are able to do that because they have to admit that they all have sin in them. And likewise, the woman is a sinner, whether she's guilty of the crime of which she's accused um, or not. You know, the thing that always leads me to have a lot of anticipation when I read that story is what was he writing in the ground? Um, and why did no one care to see? I mean, if the gospel writer thinks it's so important, I mean, it's a great visual to picture this um, scene where someone's about to get stoned and the emotions that are around like a public execution like that. And that Jesus just sort of checks out and is doing his own thing, writing in the ground, writing in the, the dirt on the ground. Um, it's a very powerful image. 
you know, and maybe there's something about, you know, him writing in the ground with his finger, you know, that's a very dusty kind of dirty place. It sounds really unpleasant to me to put my hand in the ground like that. And I think about snakes crawling on the ground. Um, you know, the idea of, you know, being like a low act, being close to the ground is um, to not act honorably. Um, so I don't know, maybe he's rewriting um, the Book of Sin, rewriting um, that idea of sort of the um, crude justice where um, one person can accuse another person and condemn that person just based on hearsay. Um, I read a book just recently called um, The Trouble with Sheep and Goats, and it's a, 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 about a, a neighborhood in the 1970s in England, and one person in this neighborhood has been condemned as a, like a, a pervert or a you know, child abuser, and it's a false accusation, but it has really ruined his life. You know, it's like the, the ostracism that's gone on because of it. Um, and it's sort of a reckoning with that kind of false accusation, and we do the same thing. I mean, in a way, it's a remaking of this story, just in people being quick to judge and rallying around what appears to be a righteous um, cause um, that may or may not be boundless, but it gives the person who's rallying what they want. It's not necessarily about, you know, the, it's not about the crime of the person because often it's an imagined crime, but it's about that feeling of being righteous on the part of others and being able to act out of that. Um, so this is a beautiful story and it challenges us. It continues to challenge all of us regardless of what our justice system is like or um, anything because it, it, you know, we like to think of ourselves as being on the right side and we can, and often that can be become a justification for acting um, cruelly or um, unjustly if, as long as we're sure enough that we're right. And it's something important for us to all remember and that Jesus especially points out in this gospel passage. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And now my friends, let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you in this beautiful morning um, with a lot on our hearts and um, maybe a lot worrying us, a lot of concerns, a lot of um, responsibility that we're all juggling. Lord, I pray that you be with us right now. I pray that you enter into those places where we feel uncertain and insecure and that you fill us with the only true righteousness that can come from you. Lord, I pray that you give us insight and peace and a sense of assurance that we may be walking slowly, but you nonetheless guide us to follow in the path that you have for us, that you have laid out for us. Lord, give us patience with our own slowness, slowness, but nonetheless, give us a will to stay on the path and to continue to act and do and be the people that you call us to be in the minutia of our lives, in all the ways that we are faced with choices in this day. Lord, we pray for people working in hospitals. We pray for doctors and nurses who are feeling overwhelmed, healthcare administrators. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick. And I pray that you be with 
all of us in this country and help us to strive for the common good in our actions today. To have a sense of calling that goes beyond ourselves and stretches out to caring for our sisters and brothers. Lord, I pray that your one holy truth will ring in our ears. And that your comfort will be upon us all. Lord, give us the power to hear your call for us today, which may not be comfortable, but give us the strength to follow it anyway. Lord, we lift up before you all those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for Catalina and James, Michael, Deborah, Robin, Marjorie, Anne. We pray for Suzanne and Richard and Amy, Alice, Christine, Joyce, JP, Barbara, Cecilia, Frank, Tony, Lynn, Eric, Jasper, Catherine, Ava, Mary, David, Linda, Jim, Father Harry, and all those we name now, either silently or aloud. Lord, be with us in all the many ways that we need you today. In our congregational cycle of prayer, we remember Rosie Otsby, Katie and Carol Hayden, Lorena Castaneda and her children, and Marie Canali. And hear us now say the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, my friends. Peace be with you all. Um, God bless you today. Um, and uh, may you find uh, the call of Jesus Christ upon you in small ways and large. Um, I will be back again tomorrow. And see you then. All right. Take care. Bye.